Hey man, hurry up. We gotta film our review. Yeah, okay, cool. Come on, man. Gross. Venom is directed by Ruben Fleischer, who directed Zombieland. And this movie stars Tom Hardy, Michelle Will Michelle Williams, Michelle <laughs> Michelle Williams, Michelle Williams, and Riz Riz Ahmed. Ahmed, Riz Ahmed. <laughs> there you go. That's Ahmed. I'm sorry. It's two. It's two a.m. and I just woke up a few minutes ago. I'm very sorry. <laughs> In this film, a man named Eddie Brock goes to report on a corporation and while digging around in some place that he definitely should not be, he accidentally bonds with an alien symbiote named Venom. So going into this movie, I honestly didn't really know how I felt about it. I don't know if I went to be good or bad, because I, I didn't want to be bad, because I mean, this is the second try that Venom's had in the movie, uh, Spider-Man 3 and now this. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. <laughs> so I feel like if it if it turned out bad, then Marvel would like hesitate to have Venom in a Spider-Man movie. But I didn't want it to be good either because I, I don't want Sony to just be making these movies just to make money and like with no like heart or anything or, or Spider-Man or anything. I, I don't really want to go first head on to, into the negatives because that's really easy to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> with this movie. Um, I'll, let's, I'll, I guess I can go and go into like some actual things that I did like about this movie. Probably my, my the biggest thing that I like about this movie is the they have this relationship, obviously, between Eddie Brock and Venom, you mm -hmm. know, and they kind of talk to each other, right? And it kind of really brings out that kind of two sided kind of person that mm -hmm. Venom and Eddie Brock are, right. you know, her, her, who Venom is, like, in the comic books, who he, they have the We Are Venom, and all that stuff, they actually talk to each other, and it's actually a pretty interesting way they convey that relationship in this film. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say it's, like, great or anything, it's def it definitely is, one like, my favorite part of the movie, my yeah. favorite aspect of the movie, uh, just, it's, some of the dialogue between them isn't the greatest, but I do like how they... At the, at, it's sort of like our little bromance between yeah. the two. And it's sort of funny at times. Yeah. I actually did enjoy it. Yeah. And then my other my other point that I kind of... That I really actually did like... Um, I felt like the acting was really good overall. For the mm -hmm. most part. Um, any acting that I didn't like, I felt like wasn't really the actor's fault. Yeah. Uh, especially I mean, from Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah. You have Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams. Yeah. Uh, what's the guy's name? Riz Ahmed. Yeah. And the, I, I know that they're great actors because I've seen them all in other movies. I yeah. know they're good actors. <laughs> and you can tell that they try their hardest they're, or they try their best in this yeah. movie. It's just what they were given just wasn't good, good at all. Yeah. So, like, it's so much, there's only so much an actor can do yeah. with what they're given. Yeah. And the only thing I can really say about this movie, and I'm going to go ahead and say this right now, if you look at this movie at face value, if you just look at this at the simplest, at its simplest form, mm -hmm. just look at it, it's a fun movie. Yeah. It's a fun movie, it's enjoyable to watch, it's there, you know? But if you actually want to look at it, and that's what we're here, that's what we try to do, is we try to look at this from more of a film's making standpoint, and what movie kind of needs to be, what are the standards. But if you look, so if you look past the fun aspect of it or the kind of enjoyable aspect of it just from the simplest form this movie's not good uh i will say that right away this movie's pretty terrible um i will say like probably this movie was so rushed this movie is crazy rushed almost uh not as bad as justice league but i'm gonna say pretty close especially for the time they had for this movie it was pretty it was very rushed. Yeah, uh, even from the very get go, from the beginning, it honestly felt this movie started off in like the middle of the second act of a movie because like, there's so many things that happened in the beginning of the movie, and they acted like we knew this Eddie Brock character for like a long time because there's certain things that happen in his life which I won't go into, even though they're in the beginning, but and they acted like oh oh man this is Eddie Brock character. Yeah. They try to make you feel for him even though yeah. we didn't know anything about him. And then he tries to go to this, the villain 
like interview him in the like first like ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. And it's like, wait, hold on, we don't even know the Eddie Brock character yet. We're, yeah. There's just so many things going on. Yeah, and the characters, like, like just bring that up. The characters aren't good in this movie, mm-hmm. including Eddie Brock, which they kind of go a little bit into his life, but overall, you don't really get a sense of him. Yeah. You know, um, Michelle Williams' character, I hated her in the beginning. <laughs> uh, she. Eddie Brock kind of messes something up with her, you know, but it's never shown to him being a bad person. Mm-hmm. Even from the beginning, like, you see that, like, she, like, loves him almost. Like, they're actually, he seems like a really good guy, right? Mm-hmm. But he messes up something because he wants to, uh, he wants to investigate this corporation because he feels like mm-hmm. they're doing something really bad, right. in which she kind of knows about. Mm-hmm. And later on, it's like she just doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's just, and... Like, I understand being a little mad at him because she he did kind of mess up something for her, but to the point of treating him like he's this terrible person was just a little too much. Yeah, and speaking of their relationship, I, I honestly didn't really feel much from their relationship, like, at all. I mean, they had, like, one scene at the very beginning of the movie, but then just, like, for the rest of the movie, they tried to make it work, but I just didn't feel, like, anything between yeah. them, them two. Yeah, and then, again... Which some reason superhero movies just need to figure which super a lot of superhero movies have figured out here lately, obviously. But it seemed I just don't want them to go back and this movie did the same thing, which is the villain is like nothing. And by that I mean like the villain is like an evil person. Yeah. Right? His plan is I don't know. I don't yeah. know what I just like, like, to be yeah, evil. Yeah, like you know like obviously you know what his plan is, but like why? Why <laughs> is he doing this? Who is this character? Like he's he's a guy who's like this really smart guy who you hear has been doing stuff to help people for years, and then all of a sudden he wants to do this, and he's like an evil person, and you're just like, why is he doing this, and who is this character? You never learn anything about him, and he's just really like this one note villain that you really just don't care about. And it's funny because uh, Jenny Slate in this movie, uh, well, in the trailers, she's uh, pronounced as symbiote, symbiote. We call them symbiote. Don't you ever, don't you ever say that again, Malik. Yeah. And like a lot of people like when saying about it, because they pretty much everybody pronounces it symbiote. Yeah. But it's funny because in this movie, I guess they changed it or they like, I don't know if they refilmed it or something, but she pronounces it symbiote now yeah. in this movie. So <laughs> it's sort of funny that they changed that. <laughs> you know, one thing I really wish it would have changed from the trailers is a lot of the dialogue in this film. Uh-huh. Like a lot of the dialogue was awful in this movie. Like a turd in the wind. And I know, I know a lot of this dialogue that you see in the trailers from the comic books. I believe Jeremy Johns had like a whole video over people getting mad because he was talking about how he didn't like the, you know, the eyes, lungs, pancreas. Thing, yeah. you know? And it's stupid. It really is. Like you can, you, you can have stuff in comic books. That's, that tra- that's fine. But whenever you're going to go into like a movie, right? Because you have to realize if you ever read comic books, they're extremely descriptive to the point where it's kind of ridiculous, you know? But that doesn't translate well to movies. So you go to a movie and you have this guy holding up a man and he literally like says everything he's about to eat on him. It just becomes kind of weird and it's kind of stupid. Yeah, and also the way they did it in the movie, like I felt like there could have been a way to make that line work. Yeah. But like the way they did in this movie, like that's the very first time you see Venom. Yeah. And like he says it like immediately as he turns to Venom. There's yeah. not like a pause or anything. It's just like... It's so weird. It's just so weird, and which that sort of leads me to my next point is that the uh, the editing for this movie is sort of like uh, splotchy. Like it, it feels like there's like one scene happens and the next scene, then the yeah. next scene. This doesn't really like flow. Yeah. It's just like so chop and not really choppy, but just yeah. it doesn't really like flow as a movie should. Be. Yeah. Another big thing is that in, I mean it's not a huge it's not a really spoiler because it's in the trailer, but the trailer you see that riot is in there, which mm-hmm. I mean he he's a. Uh, He's like a lesser known, right. lesser known Sibio. Um, and he's the villain of this movie. Right. And you can tell the difference by tw- between Venom and Riot looking at them separately, yeah. but they do look similar. So when they're fighting, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Especially this is a huge part whenever they're fighting and they're like almost like mixing into each other and you know, yeah. fighting with each other. And I just like, all I'm seeing all these like blobs just moving around the <laughs> screen. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I'll just. 
wait until it's over to figure out who wins. Right. And yeah. after a while, you're just like watching, like whatever, dude. I'm not, I don't even care about this fight anymore because it's just <laughs> insanely hard to know what's happening. Yeah, which which makes it uh, more sad that they didn't have a Spider Man the Spider Man logo on Venom's chest. Which it makes sense why in this movie because Spider Man yeah. doesn't originate or the symbiote doesn't attached to the Spider-Man first, yeah. but it still would have made it easier. Yeah. yeah, like you said, I understand why did it have a spider on mm-hmm. it, but my big, an, a big problem with this movie, which isn't necessarily with the movie itself, but just the people behind all of it, like yeah. the, uh, oh, everybody at Sony, right. is just why have him without Spider-Man? Yeah, which I, I, I can see a Venom movie happening without yeah. Spider-Man, just not like a Venom origin movie without yeah. Spider-Man, because Spider-Man is so integral to uh, Venom's uh, origin story, which I, I I think I think I could be wrong, but I think in the Ultimates uh, comics, I think Venom originates without Spider Man. But to be honest, I don't really like any yeah. of the Ultimate uh, storylines with yeah. Spider Man villains. But like for for the most part, Venom's origin starts from Spider Man. It's just yeah. sort of like a missed opportunity. Yeah. Near the end of this movie, Venom Venom does something. Um, he kind of makes a change. Of some sort and I don't want to explain what it is but he he's talking to Eddie Brock and he's it's like this moment of like Venom he's changing him in some way but they don't it's just so it's just so non-self it's just yeah. so bam you know right. because like a yeah. gradual build up yeah it's, there's no gradual build up it's just there and it's just out of nowhere and I think it's just because this movie just didn't know how to take its time. It just didn't take its time with anything. Mm-hmm. And I think a big problem with that is this movie also kind of treated its audience like idiots. Uh, to the point where they explained a lot of stuff to you. They explained that Eddie Brock was a reporter. Not only told you that Eddie Brock was a reporter, which that's all they had to do, really. <laughs> but they not only told you that he was a reporter, not just like showed him like recording something, but at the beginning of the movie, they're showing him just riding his his motorcycle and just showing little clips of him like in news right. and like that's the laziest crap there is <laughs> especially since that, that I mean it's not a lot of time but that's enough time to maybe get me to know Eddie Brock a little bit you know mm-hmm. there's also a huge portion where they're trying to explain there's, when I think it's Jenny Slate and she's like completely explaining all the symbiote stuff and it's just a whole bunch of stuff that like it's just to make sure the audience knows what's happening and we don't really need to know all this other stuff, especially since it's stuff we, it's it's pretty obvious anyways. And one thing that was very distracting during this movie was some of the choices with the, like how things, how lines were delivered and stuff, and how uh, some of the actors acted, which I think goes on to the director, because like there's one this one scene wherever before Eddie Brock even bonds with the symbiote, <laughs> and like his neighbors like playing loud music, and he goes and like. I don't, I don't know if he goes outside his uh, apartment, but like he just like screams like oh yeah, it's like, he lets us like, like that. Yeah, it's such a strange. <laughs> it was such a strange yeah. scene. And then there's like one time wherever uh, Jenny, what's her name, Jenny, Jenny Slate, when uh, Jenny Slate's character is like telling Eddie Brock that about the alien symbiotes, he's like oh alien like E.T. Like, E.T. phone home! Oh, it's like, what in the world was that? What did I just watch? <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna do our IMDb questions. I'm gonna ask my cousin's questions again this time. Number one, ready? Yes. Tom Hardy cites which TV show as his influence on the relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom? A. The Andy Griffith Show B. Breaking Bad C. Ren and Stimpy or D. Drake and Josh? Uh, I'm gonna say Ren and Stimpy. I'm pretty sure you've heard this before because yeah, you're right. I'm right? Oh yeah, awesome. <laughs> Alright, number two. <clears throat> the film released in the blank anniversary year of Venom's debut in Marvel Comics. A, the 25th, B, the 30th, C, the 20th, or D, the 35th? Um, I'm gonna say B. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Close enough. This film includes how many Oscar nominees in its cast? A. Three. B. Two. C. Four. Or D. One. C. Four. C. Four. <laughs> realize up for the D. One or D. One. I'm gonna. So let's see here. Two. Did you find 
Yeah. So close. Oh, yeah. uh, so guys, overall, I can't really say a lot of good things about this movie. It had fine acting. Uh, it had a pretty decent relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom. And I can see how it can be considered enjoyable, but overall, it's just not a very good movie. Yeah, and I, I try to go into this movie with a clear mindset, uh, but just watching it, it just seemed like so much a, of a product by Sony, and not a good product at that. And there's just so many weird decisions and pacing issues that just like completely brought the movie down. And all, but all, although I will say the special effects were pretty decent. We forgot to bring that up in the review, but I, I did enjoy a lot of the visual effects, just the rest of the movie just wasn't that great. We are going to say that Venom is 35% awesome. Like a tower in the wind. If you know what I'm talking about. Well guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also comment and let us know what you thought about Venom. Maybe you thought otherwise, and maybe you hate us for our opinions, because it seems like some people actually love Venom, and I can under like I said, I can understand why, because it does have its enjoyable aspects. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.